TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK right behind me. YouTube, you see it. This is a warning. Any firearms are operated by police. They're operated by trained professionals. Any marijuana or drug paraphernalia that may be seen in this video is in control of the police. And we are watching for educational purposes. Don't forget we do got Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Five to ten times a week we post on there, including Premier League highlights. Lock in, man. Them Premier League highlights, highlights be funny. Ask about me. I'm really actually nice with it, with the highlight, with the reactions. Uh, don't forget, we do got uh, Twitch.com. That's where you can catch a live stream, man. This is Police Interceptors. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. It's estimated organized crime costs the UK economy 37 billion each year and brings untold misery to the victims. <laughs> In West Yorkshire, there are 140. These are drugs that are in control by the police. Police operation. 26 active organized crime gangs. Their numbers are increasing. But the interceptors are fighting back. The firearms team are being briefed on a raid on a house. Primary intention is to execute a Section 8 search warrant. Oh, There's believed to be drug dealing, weapons, and suspects, including one wanted on recall to prison. His intent, we believe, is uh, to continue to feud with other uh, organized crime groups. Me personally, ain't nothing worth my freedom. You know what I'm saying? So if you out and you still jump right back in, like knowing you being watched, then you just want to go back to jail and intimidate victims by use of viable firearms. With the possibility of weapons in the property, it's a full firearms deployment. Backed up by dog handler Duncan Matthews. We've had the authorities, we've had the briefing, everybody's in place. We've got obviously the firearms teams and myself, we've also got um, the heart team, the hazardous area response team, which are the ambulance crews should something happen. This is one interceptor who loves taking his work home. Duncan and his 30 kilo German Shepherd Tia live together and have been chasing down West Yorkshire's criminals for over seven years. We'll form up in convoy and then we'll roll on. Why he got the neck thing going? Don't football linebackers wear that? You know what I'm saying? Like football, like American football? To the address. The interceptors roll out. When we first roll onto the address, um, I'll be here. Should some it's 2 57 a.m. But they run off as soon as we start, then I'll be there to deploy the dog. It's 3 a.m. on a Monday morning. The streets are quiet as the team pull up. They surround the house and start at the back. With the possibility of weapons in the property. They're not taking any chances. Maintain your positions. These are the sort of scenarios the interceptors train long and hard for. They're ready to move in. It's waiting for the authority from the firearms commander. Um, and then what we'll do, we'll then start putting some challenges in. We got the whole police force out here, jeez. And give them the opportunity to come out of the address. Time for a morning wake-up call. Jig is up, buddy. Despite several attempts to make contact, 
there's no answer. That's a negative response to verbal challenges. You see, from the approach team, approach team, push and move forward. It's time to move in. Right side, take top features. The team edge slowly forward. And despite a bulletproof shield for protection, they're still vulnerable. They hear someone coming to the door. Coming towards us now. But coming face to face with the barrel of a semi. I ain't gonna lie, this officer right here look nervous. He, he is shaking. Y'all ain't see it? Watch, watch him. He's shaking. But coming face to face with. I guess all of these high impact moments, man, a lot of adrenaline busting through your body. Passing through your body. Maybe not nervous, it's just adrenaline. The barrel of a semi-automatic has sent the man fleeing back into the house. Don't, don't give up your ground now, fellas. I'm happy. If you're happy, keep your ground. The firearms team back up to allow the man to come out. With no place to hide, the man re-emerges and surrenders. Everybody. Smart move. With one suspect in cuffs. Why do you got an industrial door on his on his house? Like the door you press the little thing and it opened. Like what, what is that? Attention turns to the lower floor. You should have never even opened the door. They it looks like an entire CCTV system has been installed. Organized crime groups often use this type of security to monitor unwanted guests. And they won't be best pleased to see this morning's visitors. Tia watches on as the firearms unit head down the stairs to gain entry. They spot two occupants. What's going on? Stay still. Stay there. Stay there. Slowly. Staring down the barrel of a gun. The suspects are let out. Stop. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Your hands on your head. They fully dressed too. That's why didn't nobody answer the door. They was getting dressed. Stay there. Spread your legs. Spread your legs. Okay. Well, Don't your knees. Don't your knees. Yeah. Don't your knees. <coughs> One is cuffed and led away. <coughs> the second occupant soon follows. Yeah. YouTube, all of these firearms are clearly being operated by police officers. Keep walking towards me. Keep walking towards me. It's not telling you otherwise. You understand? Keep walking. Keep walking. Stop. Turn around. Targeted with a taser, the lad does as he's told. The two suspects are out, in cuffs, and being questioned. Is there anything that's going to hurt us in that flat? Your honesty now will go a long way. Lies. You're still going to jail. But he's keeping tight-lipped. I want to know if there's any drugs, I want to know if there's any guns, and I want to know if there's any weapons in there that's going to hurt my officers when they're going. So far, it's been a textbook operation. Don't say nothing, buddy, because they're going to write it down. Right now, you could deny and be like, I ain't know nothing was in there, I ain't know. As soon as you say something, they're gonna be like, "Yeah, he had aware. He was aware that." Da, 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 da. Yeah. With three suspects nicked, go investigate. They believe someone else may be inside. Come round to on uh, use the secondary entry point. With the rear of the house secured, they head round to the front. I'm gonna do it that way, save the approach. I'm gonna come round to the front. Of the... Occupants. Show yourself now! The 
Again, no response. But there's one member of the team who can hunt down a criminal, no matter how good their hiding place. Go, go. Go, go. I should yeah. have sent from back here. Fearless Tia is about to enter the unknown. Play for the dog! Play yourself! The interceptors have raided a property and three men. Someone hiding inside. Occupants, come to the door! Show yourselves now! He was really about to give us a recap. The Alphalete! I know they gave recaps because originally this was on TV, but like I'm, I'm letting y'all know every time why I'm skipping past it because we don't need it. Dog handler Duncan prepares his trusty tear for entry. Wait for the dog! Show yourself, we'll send the dog! She's going in. If she finds anyone, she'll bark. Get up. Go on, get up. But all is quiet, and she returns to Duncan. Come. Come. Tim. Dog safe, no indications. No indication, my race for to go forward. OHC, acknowledge no indication, thank you. OHC, approach, over to you, search to contact to clear the premises. With an all clear from Tia, the firearms team enter and make a discovery in the bedroom. It's a significant cannabis grow. Time to search the rest of the house. Come to the top of the stairs, do it now! They would send Tia but there's a problem. There's a load of live wires, I'm not sending her in. Duncan spotted some dodgy wiring, so it's too dangerous for Tia. As you're going up, someone directly, it could be directly above you. The firearms team need to do it alone. To the right, we've got the stairs, please. Thank you. How did they get this into? It's empty of people, but full of mature cannabis plants. Hey. This hall has a potential street value of around £100,000. They may not have got the man they wanted, but they have stopped a cannabis grow on an industrial scale. I mean, the whole building is just set up for this. Every room practically in there is, is a cannabis grow. Um, there's varying stages of plants in there, from some small seedlings right up to some large mature plants. They're probably quite good at growing. Keep in mind, YouTube, whoever's reviewing this, this are police in a police situation doing an operation to take drugs off of the street. And plants, but they're not great electric, so you've just got extension cable onto extension cable and bypassed fuse boxes, and it's just a mess. It's an absolute health hazard. This is why we couldn't send Tia in. Um, she's obviously not been on an electrician's course, so she doesn't know which is a live wire or not. A further search downstairs reveals more drugs, mobile phones, SIM cards, a hatchet, a machete, baseball bats and knives. This is obviously through to one of the main grows, but what we've also noticed down behind the fridge as well, you've got a big wadge of cash. This is definitely done by an organised crime group, this will be. So this isn't just a one-man operation. I've no doubt the people we've got this aren't the ones making the money from it. The people that have been brought out of this address today will literally just be the, the workers. They're, they're just your staff floor workers. The first... Oh, I just came back from Chicago. Man, so many new, so much new stuff. A bunch of... Uh, a bunch of... Um, a bunch of dispensaries are going, they're, they're new, all over, and I was like, wow. Suspect was arrested for production of cannabis. The other two were arrested for possession of Class A and B drugs. The investigation into them and the original suspect is ongoing. No. no. Cloning a vehicle is when the number plate of a car is copied and used on a similar car for nefarious reasons. They're the original plates for it. And criminals in cloned cars aren't keen on being caught. Ow, 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 hold out and running. In Leeds, an interceptor is behind a suspected cloned BMW.
they need to get it stopped, so another unit approaches from the front in a bid to block it off. But the BMW mounts the pavement and boots it. It's raining, the roads are busy, and they're pursuing a high-powered motor heading straight towards the city centre. The Beamer pulls out past the blue car, narrowly avoiding a head-on with an oncoming van. The driver swerves in and out of traffic in a bid to shake the cops. It's A65, he's still heading towards Lee City Centre this time. He's heading for the busy city centre where the risk of a collision increases. So the interceptors back off, but the suspect hits the gas and flies through a series of red lights. Yes, 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 straight through a red light on Jupiter Road and in towards Lee City Centre again, straight through a red light where the Clayton Hotel is on the left-hand side and another red light. It's now Meadow Road towards Lee City Centre. That's three jumped reds in a row. He's hell-bent on escape, but could traffic put a dent in his getaway plan? Yes, 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 acknowledge he's now held in traffic again towards Lee City Centre. It's a collision with two vehicles. The only dent is to the other cars caught up in this desperate driver's path. He is continuing towards Lee City Centre. And he continues to put himself and other road users in danger. He's on the wrong side of the road, wrong side of the road. He has gone back onto the correct side of the road. The pursuit is now in central Leeds, and he hasn't come to grab a bargain. It's now Neville Street. We're going through Leeds City Centre onto Bishopgate Street. And it's now Wellington Street, heading out of the centre. The pavements are busy with shoppers, and the interceptors have a plan. They're trying to get units ahead to try and sting the runaway beamer. He's a right, right, right onto King Street. I'm aware of the T Pack unit behind me, but the earliest opportunity wants to come past. There's now another unit behind the lead pursuit car, so the interceptors prepare for a T Pack manoeuvre. Stand by, he's going to Queen Street now, and it's going to be a left, left, left onto Queen Street. But before the police can think of deploying their tactic, the Beamer has one of its own. He's gone off road and he's crashed into a load of barriers and could be in a box. Just back off, back off. Back off, back off. And this is one manoeuvre the interceptors decide not to follow. He's gone off road and he's crashed into a load of barriers and could be in a box. The clone car was later found abandoned nearby. And the driver was never traced. But it's one cloned vehicle involved in crime off the roads. The driver may have got away, but when the bad guys decide to make off, he's off. There's one tool in the interceptor's armory that they don't want to run into. Confirmed stinger sign. Vehicle stung, vehicle stung. The stinger. These spike strips have been stopping criminals in their tracks since their introduction to UK police forces in the mid 90s. And an escaping car criminal's worst nightmare? A stinger in the hands of a skilled operator like Kev Shaw. This interceptor has a sweet tooth for cakes, but it's the metal teeth on his stinger trap that'll be biting into something tonight. Kev's making his way to a pursuit of a Toyota Prius that's made off from local units. Single crew Kev draws on his 16 years experience of policing the local roads to second guess the Prius's escape route. The chase is just a mile away. Going down to the roundabout now with the 
The fleeing Prius is driving dangerously at speed and it's heading towards Kev. Um, I'm requesting uh, traffic, dogs, and fast as possible. Please. Might come this way, I think. Still towards the double plane hospital. The pursuit is now only a quarter of a mile away. Kev needs to act fast. Romeo 3 1, I'm close six stuck with plane. I'm going to try and sting it. He's got moments to prepare his trap. Run, Kev, run! The chase is 200 metres away. 100. Incoming. Stung, it's stung, it's stung. It's a direct hit. Kev has stung the getaway car successfully. I feel like the cop just ran it over too. Kev just left the stinger out there. Like, come on. The stinger is designed to let the tires down gradually so the vehicle doesn't veer out of control. With the Prius running on borrowed time, it's a race to get packed up. Get back in, get back in. And finish this job off. What the location, car? I think it's up just off roundabout. Before Kev can get there, news comes through that the Stinger has done its job and the driver is out and running. But his colleague has managed to catch him. That's the way he drives the with the As he makes his way to the scene, Kev reflects on a successful Sting operation. So that's where we've been right place at the right time. It's very rare that we can get a car what's coming towards you. I don't want it to carry on where it's going to endanger people. Okay, that is the first time I've seen it that that happened that quick. When it's coming towards you and they was able to get out of the car, Kev was moving swiftly, wasn't he? Colleagues, me, uh, the members of the public, other road users. So to get a stinger out to take its tyres out, he's had to dump the car because it's become undrivable. So we'll uh, just see how many tyres I've managed to get out of it. All four went over it, so I'm hoping I've got all four. The main prize is one dangerous driver off the road, but the bonus for an interceptor is nailing a full set of tyres. Like Kev inspects his handiwork. Two. Did I get four? <laughs> Absolutely marvellous. <laughs> well done. It's four of a kind for Kev, and perfect teamwork with his colleague Sam, who pursued and caught the runaway driver. <laughs> well done, nice commentary. Cheers. Who is it? Man? Who is it? I'm not sure. I can't ask for his Hello, mate. You know, mate. What's with this then? With what? Oh, dear me. The suspect remains poker face. <laughs> but the interceptors hold all the cards. Oh, that wouldn't be in that car. That is what we joined this job for, to stop cars, um, and it's basically, we, I've stung it, and he's had, he's had to leave the car, end of day, it, we've got the car stopped, we've got it recovered, he's been arrested, and it is, uh, that's it, no one's been hurt, no one's been damaged. So anyway, I've managed to, managed to sting it, and so yeah, job well done. The driver was later charged with dangerous driving, driving whilst disqualified and without insurance and is currently wanted on warrant and if this wasn't reward enough for Kev his dab hand with a stinger has earned him something special a hedgehog badge so this was arrived from stinger from um, earlier on this week and uh, after you submit a report basically tell him that you've stung a car how many wheels you've taken out and circumstances of it and then, because it's successful, I'll send you this little viewer. It is, it is like a badge of honour. And who say you swear to God, you get a little a little Boy Scouts badge for that. Who better to present Kev with his hedgehog honour than his old mate Spenner? This is this is my training of Kev complete. I've shown him everything now. Look, he's finally the fruits of his labour. PC Shaw, look after it. Thanks very much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now we gotta be on the lookout for these. I ain't never seen this. That comes to me. Some kids the interceptors deal with are as nice as pie. Like this, 
I don't, I'm not really good at flossing. But others... How old are you? 12, Nat. 12? Yeah, Nat. ...are bad eggs. <laughs> Steve Oliver is blue-lighting over to a pursuit of a Ford Focus, believed to have been stolen by teenagers. We've got a vehicle failing to stop for a firearms unit in Leeds, which is just across this side uh, of Leeds for us. So we're going to uh, head over to the team back unit. Being a family liaison officer and a road death investigator, Steve sees the sometimes fatal consequences of reckless kids in cars. Up ahead, the fleeing Focus has crashed and come to a stop. Yeah. Steve pulls up on scene. The lads in the car have legged it. But a firearms officer is after them. And returns with a successful catch. Got some cuffs, mate. Stay there. Stay there. All right. Steve does the honours and cuffs the youth. This. Yeah. Bro's definitely getting out the exact same night. He's like, like it doesn't matter. He's a child. It's the suspect they wanted, the driver. This kid isn't even old enough to take a driving test. Yet he's making off from police in a stolen car. Hey, boy. Oh, he gonna come pick him up? He won't be able to drive until whatever, however age, probably 18, which. It's nothing. The only vehicle this lad belongs in is the back of a police car. A, a, a school bus. So the lad's acting up, but he's facing serious charges. Dangerous driving. Yes, uh, twock as well as a stolen. So it's aggravated twock, isn't it? Yeah, good result. It's a stolen vehicle. Um, driven dangerously for the firearms unit. Obviously, as we've been coming along, we've just managed to get on the back of it, just as it's... Uh, bailed out from it um, and this lad's a driver so I think there's two or three others we haven't seen them bailed out um, but it's always good to get a stolen vehicle back and get somebody in the vehicle as well good job the lad is on his way to the nick and is blaming the wet conditions for his capture <laughs> but Steve isn't convinced he's got the next Lewis Hamilton in the back it's not dry you're not a very good driver you've crashed Now it's a meeting with the duty sergeant. Jordan, stand there for me, mate. Do you want someone notified it apart from your mum? Just my mum. Just your mum. Although the kid has been acting the big. I ain't gonna lie, he got that. He got a nice little fit on it. That, that jogger with the shoes. Man, he's still calling for his mum. He definitely got some uh, olders. They've been in the place for the last however many years. You've always had kids doing it, whether they be 13, 14, 15, 16. It's sad. Uh, I don't think the kids who start nicking cars that early are ever going to stop nicking cars. He clearly thinks he's the best driver in the world anyway. Uh, I don't think he's ever going to change that. I don't think his ego is ever going to let him change it. I think he's down a slippery slope to probably crashing his car one day and getting hurt or spending a lot of time inside. But it's not just me. Why don't I refer him and his mom to some type of program and make it court appointed and he has to go to it for a year? Maybe it'll change him around. Maybe, do y'all got anything like that? Making cars that the region's troublesome teens are up to. Steve is straight back out on patrol and pulled over by a bouncer who has just witnessed a fight. We've had a guy beat up really bad down here, but the guys have done it are just here. And right. yeah, he's had his head stamped on, kicked him, we've had to get an ambulance for him. Really? Which ones are the ones who've done it? Uh, the red coat and just down there? Yeah, um, red hood, red arms, blue chest. Just speaking to one of door staff down on Sackville Street, they've had a, a gentleman assaulted quite badly, uh, head stamped on. Uh, suspect's still here. Uh, we're just going to go and see if we can uh, detain him. With the victim potentially seriously injured, it's vital to get the suspects off the street. A couple of local units have the suspect in the blue and red coat in hand. 
and Steve is pointed towards his two mates trying to make off in a taxi. Oh no, three on one, okay. But this ride is going nowhere. I'll get out, I'll get out, I'll get out. You will, stay there for me. I'll get out. They were this close to getting away, this close. Steve takes no risks, and this suspected street fighter is straight into cuffs. And sit front. There you go, mate. Come out. Face car for me. You got anything in your pockets I need to be aware of? Anything sharp? Despite the young lad having blood on his hands, he protests his innocence. Mine nothing wrong, sir. Currently locked up for a fray, mate. What's a fray? It means you've been seen fighting in the street. I ain't done sir. He's suspected of a fray, but if the victim were to press charges, the crime would change to assault. It depends what the victim is involved in. What are we going to guess? I'm going to guess he presses charges. I recall you, you. Steve takes one of the suspects to the Nick, while the other two travel by van. Yeah, it's pushing for me up. Yeah. Yeah. Great. See you down there. It's the first meeting with a duty sergeant for the suspect, but not for Steve. This is the second time tonight I've been stuck in a booth. Because you're only 16, um, we'll need to get an appropriate adult um, for yourself. Is there somebody that will be able to come down and act as an appropriate adult? Like the little parents. Yeah. Oh, these are shorties too. Yeah, they're getting out the same day too. Yeah. Oh, it's got blood on you there. Is that from somebody else or yourself? Yourself. So, where from? Okay. YouTube, he got a nosebleed. A nosebleed doesn't explain his ripped t shirt, and a ruined top is the least of this lad's worries after a discovery in his man bag. Oh, beautiful. Class. You're also under arrest on suspicion of Class A drugs. So you don't have to say anything about Miami defense if you don't mention one question, something later on. YouTube, once again, these are in possession of poor police officers. I think anything you do say may be given in evidence. His night's Whoa. gone from bad to worse. What's that, Bill? What have we got? Oh, sorry. Mm. Uh, one, two, three. Such as white and cash. Yeah. yeah. It's seven wraps of a white substance believed to be cocaine, plus 150 quid cash. Though he's now facing supply of a Class A drug. Possession with intense supply, mate. You understand that? It's not my book, yeah. Yeah, one of them. And the eagle-eyed duty sergeant has spotted another problem. According to this passport, you were born 2000, correct? Yeah. So whose is this? Is that not you? The passport reads his date of birth as 2000, but the lad claims to be 16, meaning it should read 2002. Oh, I see what you've done. You've been, uh, you've been changing this passport. No. Oh my God! Now you're falsifying a, a government ID. What is that? What is that charge? James, sell up. He's going to jail. In a bid to appear of age. The 16-year-old has stuck a sticker over his date of birth to... Oh, he was trying to... Okay, he is 16. He was trying to be grown. ...make him look two years older. Two parts and two parts now, Bon. Yeah. The passport dated 2000. If you look, can you look closely? Yeah, yeah it's stuck it, it's stuck it over the top. Yeah. I can pull off the uh, the zero that's been stuck on over the top, so I think that probably means you have. <laughs> this lad might be better off using his stickers for his sticker book. There you go, mate. Enjoy. So you got a 16-year-old kids dealing drugs. That seems a little crazy to do that to your passport. Like, how easy it is it for y'all to get passports out there? Like, it's a whole thing for us to get passports out here. Like, I feel like it's super easy. Everybody got one out there. On people's heads. The drugs turned out to be cocaine, and the suspect awaits his day in court. No further action was taken for all three men with respect to the affray charges. The investigation into the runaway driver is ongoing.
being lied to comes as par for the course. This looks peaceful. Course for a West Yorkshire interceptor. People will try uh, their utmost in order to try and get away with committing an offence. But nothing beats that copper's intuition um, on knowing whether or not you're being lied to. On patrol tonight, with a combined experience of over 30 years, is Kev Shaw and Chris Spenner Spencer. These two have been around the block a few times and are masters in the fine art of sniffing out porky pies. Up in front, a smart car has aroused their suspicions. So this car from front, we're just doing a quick check on it and it's saying that the MOT has expired on it. An old smart car is valued at about a grand. Approximately a million less than Spenner's dream motor, the McLaren P1. But all cars need an MOT. And Spenner hits the blues. Hello, my friend. Do us a favour, turn engine off, just jump it back, please. Hello, is it your car? Yes, it is, yeah. What's your name? Shaband. Shaband, just jump in, please. That's fine. How long have you had it? I've had it, what, the car? Yeah. I've had it for about four years. Four years, awesome. Have you got any driving documents? No, I don't know. Shaban claims not to have any documents on him, so they'll need to check to see if he is who he says he is. First up, the reason for pulling him over. Uh, your MOT, when was it last done? See, the car, this this going to rise suspicion every time. I don't care if it came like this from factory, but multicolored, black, silver, orange, it looked raggedy. <laughs> reason Every for pulling him over. You. Uh, your MOT, when was it last done? MOT, I don't know. Yeah. It's expired, mate, in September. Oh, has it? Yes. So, on that alone, are you committed an offence? You don't have to say anything, but may have your defence if you don't mention one question, something which will later align in court. Anything you do say may be in evidence. That's one. That's one, yeah. Shaban doesn't seem too bothered, but an MOT fine can be up to a thousand pounds. So perhaps he's flush, or maybe he's hiding something else. Yeah, he's grabbing that nose. Let's put that picture on. It looks like one of yours. Just a minute. Take off your hat, mate. Spenner checks the man against a picture on the police database of the registered keeper. Very confused. I'm just checking out who you say you are, that's so. all. And Kev isn't convinced with the details the suspect has given them. <laughs> so what's your real name? Shaban. Spenner's spidey senses also tingling. Time for a little digging. Are you known to the police have ever been arrested? Nope. Have you got any points on your license now? Shaban. S-H-A-B. Well, after some checks, they have intel this man isn't a Shaban, but is in fact a Kasim. Kasim. All oh, right, so you're Kasim then? Who? Oh. You. Who's that? The man is still playing a game, but Spenner has a few tricks up his sleeve. I'll tell you what, pass your phone for a sec. That's what I'm saying. Me, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's me, yeah. Yeah, Kasim. Kasim, yeah? Yeah, well you just said you... You said you're Shaban. You, you said who's a car registered? No, I didn't. Oh. Unfortunately for Kasim, the camera never lies. Is it your car? Yes, it is, yeah. What's your name? Shaban. Shaban. So, what's your real name? Shaban. The man's web of deceit has riled Spenner. Please don't treat it like morons. No, that's what you said. No, no, I, I, I said, I what's you your what name? your name is? My name's Kasim. Right. It soon becomes clear why the man formerly known as Shaban was telling a tall story. Do you have a licence, Cassim? No, I don't. Right. <laughs> That's what I was getting at, right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you disqualified still? I don't have a licence. Without a licence or insurance, Cassim will also be without a car. Could you organise a vehicle we're coming for us, please? No licence, no insurance. You're going to be reported for using a vehicle without MOT, using a vehicle without a driver's licence, well, drive otherwise in accordance with a licence, and no insurance. OK, the car will be seized, you'll get a, some paperwork for someone to get it back. That's what, that's what we're getting at. 
and there's just time to update the police photo album. Do us a fair amount, I'm just going to take another picture because it's been a while since we've taken it. You're getting younger or what? You're getting older like the rest of us, mate. So you can't really be like that. Just, no, take it off for us, pal, because <laughs> it, it... There you go. No, that's better. Say cheese. Look at that there. Eh? You could have that on a dating site. Oh, yes. <laughs> See you later. The suspect was a convincing liar, but it'll take more than that to get one past this pair. Smoke and mirrors all the time. You've got to have, have your wits about you because they'll try any trick in book. And it, it, it's a great place to work because it makes you a better cop because you really have to know your stuff. And it's always that that little bit of pride that I haven't had the wool pulled over my eyes. So it can, it can go for a walk in a minute now. The suspect was reported for driving with no license, no MOT and no insurance. He awaits his day in court. First rule of Bradford policing, discount everything anyone ever tells you first off, because it's probably a total lie. Jump out. Still to come. Jump back. No Lisa in this episode, huh? It's a criminal offence to drive a car without insurance in the UK. It's over one million still do. It would appear at the moment you are using that motor vehicle without insurance. And every three days, someone is involved in an uninsured or hit and run accident. Back out on patrol tonight is Spenner with rookie Vicky Arundale. The car in front comes up as having no insurance, so it's time for a chat. Vicky, you can get out. Hey, buddy, you all right? Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Turn it off. Good. Jump out. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm brick. Jump me back. Both lads are in their pyjamas. That's not a crime, but driving without insurance is. Is it your car? Uh, it's my girlfriend. What's your name? Yeah. What, what what insurance? Drive that car? Uh, I should be on it with her. No, you're not. No? No, no on us. He claims to be on his girlfriend's insurance, but the car isn't insured at all. Imagine putting PJs like a onesie as a grown man, first of all, in public, though, like in public. It's cool to wear it, whatever. But then you got on some shoes, tennis shoes, like you, you look wild. There is no insurance for it? There's no insurance for it at all? No. Oh, then you better uh, go girlfriend paying it, mate. So. Is it? Yeah. Probably should give her a ring then, shouldn't we? See what she's got. See what she's got to say. The German man calls his girlfriend. I've just been pulled by the police, and the car saying it's got no insurance. Oh, sorry, okay. No. Oh. You've been paying it, haven't you? Yeah. Because we. When, when did you insure it? I can't remember when it got clapped. And that yeah. were. That would have been about April, wasn't it? They insist they insured the car a while back, so Spenner runs a check. Just do as a VI check when you get a moment, please. Have you got any documents or any emails or anything like that? Uh, I might have all my phone, I can have a look. Have a look, have a look, chick, and then if you find them, ring us. All right? I, uh, I shall have a look. Cheers. Cheers. But she might Sorry, save man. her efforts as the check comes in. Negative. Three thousand people had insurance. Third of October, it had insurance on the 4th, there was no insurance. It seems someone has cancelled their policy. So it got cancelled on the 3rd of October. Why would the insurance, it didn't get cancelled, ch she changed it into her name in April. Right. Despite the man's protests, he wasn't even on the previous policy. Your name wasn't on that policy anywhere. So it ain't insured and you weren't insured anyway. So having no insurance is an offence. I've got to tell you that. Yeah, but you're going to be. As I was, I was insured on it. That doesn't help yet, yeah, but that doesn't help if you're involved in a crash, does it? Claiming you thought you were insured is not a defence, and a car without insurance means one thing. The recovery in the car. It was cancelled in October. The man doesn't fancy walking home in his pajamas so desperately pleads his innocence. We haven't cancelled it, mate. Yeah, I kind of get that, but I can it's been it cancelled. 
it's been cancelled. Uh, we pay for it because it comes out of the bank every month. I ain't going to sit and have a, like, this isn't a debating session, all right? I'll ring you back because I don't even know I'm going to get home. It's up to drivers to check their insurance. And Spenner, who's heard every excuse under the sun, has... Oh, you got pockets in that joint and everything, okay. ...little sympathy. Right, let me explain this. So the car's getting seized. Uh, how am I supposed to get home? Walk. Walk. <laughs> oh, get Dude, a taxi. Uh, look at me. Does it look like I've got money on me? Uh, I don't know. I'm in my pyjama bottoms and a dressing yeah. room, mate. Do you really think I can walk home like this? Why don't you take some responsibility for your actions? There'd be a starter for 10, eh? The pyjama boys look ready for bed, so Spenner tries to sort them a lift home. Do you have a taxi number? Dude, again, no money, in pyjama bottoms. Dude, do you have money at your house? Huh? That's not the point, dude. I am not what? getting in a taxi like this. Find them walk. Walk then. <laughs> up the street. Walk up the street, go in a taxi. But this dude refuses to take a taxi. Take my car. What do I do? Take your car, leave him here. What can I do? What about all of my stuff? You can get it back. It's going to be uber safe in the police compound if you don't want to get it back now. Before the walk home, the lad says his goodbyes, starting with the cameraman. All right. You can get that, dude, I swear to God. Point the camera at me one more time and I will shove it when the sun goes shine. No, you won't. Police right there. Which might be threatening had he not been wearing pyjamas and a dressing gown. Right, right. He manages to find another top in his car and now wants Spenner's number for a hot date. It's on that bit of paper I've just given you. Right, I'm fit. So I'll make it tomorrow when I find it. Look forward to it. Looks like this is one pyjama party. There you go. Gotta get a word in somewhere. I know you rookie, but... Party that Spenner isn't invited to. Unfortunately, he won't take any responsibility for his own actions. My car's insured, I know it is, I make sure of it. Um, you kind of, you have to do it, don't you? It's part and parcel of being a grown-up. I thought it was going to be nice to me then. He didn't disappoint though, he wasn't. Sticks and stones though, that's what I've always said. <laughs> yeah, sticks and stones don't hurt my fist too. <laughs> you can't say it whilst you're walking away though, it's not as, it, it's funny. Till leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification fast.